Latif Crowder, how are you, mate? God, I'm doing good, brother. How you been? I'm very well. God, it's been a long time. I haven't seen you since we did Undisputed 3, which was 2009? Nine, I think. Yeah, Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, but I'm watching you do your thing, man. Proud of you, man. Really proud of you. Proud of, your proud of you too, my friend. Proud of you yeah. too. Listen, yeah. we're still in it. That's the important thing. Yes, yeah, sir. As long as we get paid to do what we love, we're, we're lucky. Yes, sir. I believe yeah, that. Um, when people say to me, what's your favorite fight that you've ever done? I've got a few, but of course, our fight is, is always on that list. Like the top three, I have to say the one I did with you, phenomenal to work with you. I've never worked with anyone as explosive and as fast. I mean, you know, you and Tony Jar are the most explosive and quick martial artists I, I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I appreciate that, man. I can say the same as well. Every time someone asks me, um, the, type, the fight between you and I is definitely uh, my top top two, I would say. <laughs> and three, you, did it, yeah. you did it with a sprained ankle. Oh, you did it with a sprained ankle as well. Right? Did I? Did I? Ankle? I remember I you had a sprained ankle. ankle. I had a sprained ankle. Did I? Yeah. I think that something hurt. Like, I remember Larnell was like, oh, man, Scott's hurt. So you guys take it easy during rehearsals. And then we did that move. And then bam, there goes I, I went down. Then Larnell was like, oh man, both my guys are down. And I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> so but we had the bio freeze going and you know, pumped each other yeah. up. So was- well, that's the real fear of making a martial arts film or an action film. If you're yeah. performing and you know, stuntman different thing, because they'll just get another one if you get injured. But if you're the if they need your face as well, it's always like, okay, how far can I push it without yeah. getting injured? Yeah, I think we changed the chore- choreography around a little bit to, you know, save the ankle a little bit. But now nah, we pretty much went out, you know, went for it, taped it up. And uh, just like I said, put a lot of that bio freeze on it and went for it, man. And uh, you yeah. as well, man. You're, you were, you were, you know, someone I, I, I love to be around. My whole life, I was always taught to be around someone that's always better, stronger, faster, that to push me to be better, stronger and faster. And uh, my fight with you, man, it was just, uh, and I felt that, you know, it was never, it never went down at all, you know, all the way to the end, you know, until whatever you choked me out, whatever. It just, we never, we never lost our energy, which I loved a lot. You know? Yeah, it was a pleasure, man. I mean, there's things that I do in that fight that I wasn't even sure that I could do. Like yeah. running up the, the thing and doing the reverse front somersault. I did. I did. I tried it in the gym and it works, but to do it off the post was a, a different story. And then the other move I did, and I really yeah. didn't know if I could do it, was the, the kip up, but with the twist. But the twist, right? <laughs> right. Now, I think that was one of your specialities. Like, I'll have a go at that. <laughs> right. And what people don't know, like every time he did it, he did it, he was spot on every time. You know, most takes, it was just see if we can do it better and better. So yeah, that was yeah. awesome. There's, wow. a, there's a few moves I did as well. I was like, man, I'm not sure if I can land them. Or um, I remember, I think our first sequence, and uh, I did like, um, gosh, I, I can't say it in English, but I did like a, a meo lua di compasso, and then I turned around and did it back with the other way. And I've never done that before in, in one sp- spot, you know, just for camera. You know, usually in couple ways, kind of moving side to side, but I had to do that in one spot. And I was like, Ooh. Well, we'll look at that in a minute, and yeah, you remind, yeah. remind me about that. But first, Latif, as we do with all my guests, Please, and I want to know about this because capoeira is something that I really do not know that much about. Please tell us your, your martial arts background, how you got into capoeira and, and all of that stuff. Uh, I was born into capoeira. You know, capoeira was a part of uh, the history from you know, my culture where I was born in, in ba- Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. is the name of the city, São Salvador. And that's really, really popular for capoeira, pretty much where the main culture from uh, capoeira comes from. So I started that with my family, with my father, pretty much like in the streets. We didn't really have an academy or anything like that until I came to the United States when I was really young. And then um, I started training a little bit more with my family and stuff, nothing um, really special until I, I met, in the, I think it was about 91, uh, Mestre Vaguinho. And uh, he was in San Jose, uh, California. And I met up with him 
And uh, I started training capoeira with him and he refined my capoeira, you know, completely to what you see today. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's how I got into capoeira. Any, any yeah, other you, martial arts that you've, you've dipped in and out of? No, you know, it's, it's funny. A lot of the people think I do a lot of mar different martial arts, but I don't. I just, a lot of the buddies I met over the years and stuntmen and, you know, great martial artists like you. I just trained and dabbled a little bit in their martial arts mm -hmm. and kind of added to mine, you know, sometimes in, in fight scenes and everything. But no, I never really formally took another martial art. So can you break capoeira down for the uninitiated, the people that might know not enough about it? I mean, obviously, what from what I know is that it was martial art that was disguised as a dance, whether yeah. that's true or not. Yeah, pretty much uh, the capoeira was brought to Brazil by the African slaves. Um, a lot of them came from places like Angola, the Congo Kingdom, uh, Nigeria, and places like that. And a lot of them were warriors or prisoners of war from Africa. The martial art was banned, pretty much. You, the slaves weren't allowed to use it. And uh, so they had to find a way to disguise it. Okay. And uh, there's different, many different tribes. And uh, so it's like a mixture of different things. Uh, the music um, kind of helps disguise the martial art. They just kind of started moving side to side. We call it a jinga, kind of disguises the martial art, but they're actually setting up their stances like a boxer. And uh, pretty much they combine all these elements of acrobatics, dance, and uh, martial art techniques to disguise what they're really trained for, which was to fight for their freedom. And there's been many different periods of capoeira, how it's changed uh, through, the, through the years. Um, it's had its underground periods, you know, and it's had its, um, you know, periods where it was in the maroon colonies, it, in, it, where people were actually free, the slaves were free, the Africans were free, and they were allowed to develop more techniques. Uh, after that, it became kind of a, a criminal period because there was no jobs, uh, there was, you know, there was a lot of inequality, and capoeira was still uh, against the law. You know, it was, it was uh, forbidden to uh, do capoeira. So up until the 1930s, um, there was a famous guy named Mestre Bimba, who actually saved capoeira, and he made a presentation to the government to make it a formal martial art. And this was, yeah, pretty much around that time. And since then, it's been in academies and it's not been in the streets anymore or, you know, somewhere in the country. It's there. It's been in academies since then. OK, now when, when you're doing the uh, what would you call it when you're you're with a sparring partner and you're 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 playing or whatever? Oh, that's called a holder, a holder. So when you're playing, it's called a jogo. It's just a game. Yeah. We're, we're not actually fighting you know we're actually kind of it's like practice it. right yeah it's practice however in capoeira it's very there's no there's a lot of gray areas it can turn into a fight any moment even with me and you <laughs> oh, best yeah. that and, sounds crazy i'll oh, yeah. just come to have a good time a bit of fun guys and then all of a sudden oh shit this stuff yeah. goes serious <laughs> yeah it's like a violent game of slap boxing or something like that you know it can turn <laughs> any moment you know but that's kind of um you know, part of the game of Capoeira is learning how to read your opponent or learning how to uh, manipulate him, you know, in the way that you want to. You know, it doesn't always have to be violent. Obviously, it's, I mean, it seems all about the kicks and the acrobatics. And when you're playing that game, I don't see anyone throwing any punches. So is punches part of Capoeira? Are punches it is. Capoeira? It is a part of Capoeira, but not a big part of Capoeira. Not, not during the games of Capoeira. Yeah. However, is it... You know, wrong to throw a punch? Nope, not at all. There's no no rules to it, but there are certain rules that uh, you know you just don't do on capoeira. We usually use an open-handed uh, strike. Good slap. Yeah, good slap. Whether it's straight, just like anything else, you know, jab, cross, you know, hook. Uh, but yeah, they use uh, open hands. They don't usually. There's a philosophy maybe behind that. Uh, a long time ago, I heard that they uh, a lot of the Africans in back in the day didn't want to destroy their hands because they had to need it to work, to do other things. So these are feet, oh, yeah. elbows, knees, things like that. Well, if you're going to knock someone out with a spin kick, it's probably yeah. best off using a capoeira kick because they come around with some velocity, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. I think, uh, you know, capoeira to me is not so much like a, uh, a ring art. You know, it's not made to just, you know, send a ring. It's kind of made to hurry up, do your thing, and either flee or stay there and you know, destroy the person. 
Now, do yeah, you get yeah. a lot of that? People like dissing it, saying, ah, it's just breakdancing and that, that stuff doesn't work. Well, you know, my father always said that, said this too. He's like, if they think that, then you're actually doing it right. Because that's kind of originally how, you know, we wanted people to perceive it. Like, ah, it's nothing. They're just dancing. Uh, they're just you know, having fun, singing. That's what they, uh, they do. And then, boom, the next day. You know. <laughs> there you go. I remember seeing your showreel back in the day. Mm. I couldn't believe how high you were jumping. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at that. Ooh. Yeah, it was definitely back in the day. How old are you there? Oh, is in my mid 20s, maybe? Yeah, look at the height on this here. Yeah. That is insane. Uh, uh, LABC, I think. Yeah. I was still with uh, Zero Gravity, just Team Zero Gravity in, in Northern California. Oh, yeah. Doing this. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Oh, so, thank you. I mean, look at that there, the height there. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant stuff. So, how did you end up getting into the film business? How did that all come about? Man, uh, kind of luck kind of stumbled yeah. upon me. Yeah, I... Um, it wasn't a plan then? It wasn't like, oh, I want to go and do stunts? Just... No, it wasn't a plan at all. I think I, I actually, I was around 23. I just came back from Brazil. You know, I had no money, gave all my money away. Um, and then I was trying to figure out what am I going to do here. Um, I met a guy in Oakland named Tony Chu. And he uh, did cup waiter with me actually in San Jose. And he was asking me to be part of this uh, stunt group that he's uh, forming called Zero Gravity. And it's just an independent stunt group, and just a bunch of guys from different martial art academies getting together and doing pretty much Jackie Chan, Hong Kong style you know, fight yeah. scenes and stuff. And around the cities of Oakland, Hayward, all these different, uh, different places. I remember and, seeing uh, some of their stuff back in the day, Zero Gravity, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was uh, right when the internet started, you know, pretty much. I didn't even know what it was. And um, yeah, so, you know, he wanted to uh, kind of mix Capoeira in with this Hong Kong style. And I don't think anyone's ever done anything like that before. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I wasn't thinking anything of it. So we've made a few films and he put it on the internet and it actually did pretty well. I started doing that and I was like, oh, wow, cool. Could possibly have a career in this. And then, however, one day I get a call. It was around 2004. I was at work. And uh, I get a call from Thailand, uh, and uh, uh. It was, yeah, and um, it was actually uh, the production company there, and they were asking me my availability if I would want to do a movie with Tony Ja. And this is actually I just saw I got through seeing Tony Ja doing Ong Bak, and I was like, wow, this cat is is amazing, you know. And I was like, wow, this could this be the same Tony Ja? So and, how did uh, they know about you? They they found me on the uh, internet with the zero gravity. But yeah. before that, they saw me, I guess, in a videotape uh, and like a, not so much full contact, but just playing a very aggressive cop waiter game and, you know, just taking down certain people. And that's the that's what they wanted for their movie. I guess what Tony and Pana, uh, Tony's master, uh, they were looking for a cop waiter guy to fight Tony for the protector, Tony Amgoon. And uh, I guess they were auditioning people and they didn't really find anyone with uh, that can make it look like a fight, you know? Mm. So I guess they ended up finding a video of me somewhere. Like I said, it's an it's a internet, it had to be VHS. I don't know how they found it, but it was of me, you know, fighting in Capoeira. So how many days did you spend making this fight? I mean, I think it was about a week, a week. and a half, a week and a half. Plenty of time then, yeah? Yeah. What yeah. did you think when they said, yeah, you're going to be doing it in, in a big, massive puddle? Oh, man. I, I, I didn't really think anything. Um, I was just like, okay, how am I going to make this work? You know, me and Tony, you know, we both were like, man, how are we going to make this work? Uh, it's going to be, you know, just, we had to practice on the dry mats, you know, um, and then kind of wet them up a little bit, maybe to, you know, get the feeling of how it's going to be during the day. But to be honest, man, we just went for it. We didn't know how it was going to feel with the water or the fire. Um, is it a set? 
I'm sorry? On a yeah, studio, yeah. A sound yeah. stage. Yeah, yeah, it was a sound yeah. stage. And what's the floor like underneath? Is it matted or is it hard? No, it wasn't matted. It was definitely hard. And yeah. uh, I kind of needed it to be hard to do moves like that, uh, like up the yeah, nice. handspin and things like that. And to be honest, for me to cut back and forth and change direction, it's yeah. a little bit easier for me to have it hard. So we had like a thin layer of carpeting. You know, I think that was pretty much what we had. So it was enough padding, you know, for, for us to do what we had to do and not get hurt. So that's just amazing there. Oh, yeah. Strength that you've got. So was was Tony and the team saying, well, what can you do and, and working out how he would respond and all the rest of it? Show me your best stuff and we'll work into the choreo. Man, yes. It was it was weird. Tony didn't speak uh English and I didn't speak Thai. And we were sitting there for a while. We had our translators. And then we kind of got up. Tony was like, chase me. Chase me around with some moves, you know. And, uh, you know, just right now. And, man, we just, it, it was pretty much like the first scene you see there. It's pretty much what I threw at him. You know, but not, you know, not as fast, of course. But the first sequence we do here where I was throwing a lot of different uh, spin kicks, male Luigi you can pass at him. It's pretty much how it started. Yeah. And uh, we just kind of developed it from there. And he, I mean, he really was trying to figure me out. Like I was throwing all these different things at him. We were just actually, I was playing my game of Capoeira and he was playing his game of Muay Thai. He was trying to figure me out and I was trying to figure him out. This kick here, it, it amazes me. It's just so fast and precise. Mm. And you know, if you didn't know what you were doing, you're not going to be able to block this kick because you know, <laughs> you got, yeah. you're on your hands and then there's a, there's a bloody front kick coming at you from upside down. A lot of those kicks that I, I, I use is kicks that I have been kicked by. You know, yeah. that little kick. So, yeah, I know what kind of would work, you know, because it's worked on me. But really, this is two performers at their very best doing... It's, an, an, it's a brilliant fight sequence. This bit here, you're so inch close to each other. And, you you know, how long did it take for you to think, to feel that you can just throw this at Tony and he's, he's going to be fair to react? Because... You know, you don't want to kick the star in the face, do you? Did, did, no. did you just feel straight away that he was on top of it and you were fine to go full out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From, oh, well, <laughs> a funny story, you know, um, man, first take, first take ever we did uh, is when I, I take off my hood and I, I strike him. Yeah. Um, I kicked him right in the head with that scorpion kick. Right in the head. It was a, it was a good one, too, and it, it kind of uh, rocked him a little bit. And uh, uh, his master was clapping, you know, like, yeah, that's it. That's what I want. And I was like, oh, shoot. I just, oh, that yeah, one, that, yeah. I made contact there as well. And, uh, but that wasn't the really, really hard one. Oh, right. But after that one, after that take, he kicked me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. when we that's both were like, hey, man, yeah, at least we can take each other's kicks. But uh, right when I saw him move, man, the first day, I knew he can get out the way. I, I, I knew he, he kind of moves like a capoeirista. He's just Muay Thai, but he moves like a capoeirista. So, uh, yeah, I trusted him to be, be able to move out the way. And he did the same with me. Yeah, it's uh, incredible to watch you both together. Thank you. And now, plus, I you know, in, in capoeira, you know, that's pretty much what we do anyway. We get in close. Yeah. Um, I kind of know the angle. I'm always looking at him. Even when I'm going upside down and whipping a kick, I um, always have my eyes on him. So if I need to stop the kick, I'll stop the kick. Now, I know you got injured, right? Right. Yeah. Was it with the punch front summy? Yeah. I think I did about 10 to 12 of those. And I had a feeling around like <laughs> the eighth one, you know, my Achilles were getting tight. And uh, it was a long day already. Yeah. And uh, man, I just knew it. And then that 12 take, boom, right there. Pops. Bang. Pops, yeah. It's and then uh, someone took over. Someone I took believe over. it's Aaron Tony, right? Yep, that's Aaron Tony. Yeah. I, I, right away. I, I think that was his first job. I'm not sure. But yeah, pretty much both our first jobs. Yeah. Well, i got to tell you, I had no idea. I, I couldn't tell that it was a, a different performer. Oh, that's good. I mean, you probably can, of course, because it's you. But yeah. um, no, I, I didn't have a, have a clue. But yeah, that's um, back somersault into the front somersault. <laughs> yeah. Well, was was it anything to do with the water or it was just overuse? 
stuff. It's just over you. Yeah. Yeah. We use a lot of energy. You know, that whole fight used a lot of energy, both of us. Because cup weight, I'm always moving. You know, I'm always in a like a horse stance position pretty much. So yeah, my leg, I think it just gave out. Let me tell you what I did once. This was just practicing in the gym, but I did back somersault into the punch front somersault. But yeah. I thought the floor was closer than what it was. So as I did the back somersault, I went into the punch front and the floor wasn't there. And then <laughs> the floor was there and both of my ankles went whack. Both of my oh. ankles sprained at the same time. They had to carry me out of the gym. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, I hope you didn't have to do that before a film or anything. I thought I'm not doing this in a film. I'm not that yeah. stupid. I'll leave that to Latif. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. No, nope. you're gonna yeah, just take it from me. Yeah, that one. I just do that one like three or four takes, man. That's that's about it. So well, that's a bad injury. So that was setting you back at least six to nine months, right? Yeah, it was that old school, you know, surgery where they cut you open, reattach, and then give you a zipper, seal you up with a zipper. Uh, that plays on your mind, doesn't it? When you get a a, a, a bad injury like that, uh, it's the word. You get the confidence back. Yeah, it really, you know, it helped me a lot is going back to Capoeira. You know, I, I um, that's the thing that's good about Capoeira. Even if you're not moving, if you're injured, you can still learn music. You can still, still learn the songs, culture. Is, there's so much to learn in Capoeira, not just the movement. So <laughs> I uh, made the move to L.A. like around 2005. Started getting in, getting in on the scene. Yeah, I met up with uh, Larnell. Yeah. Larnell. Yeah, Larnell. Obviously, he was the fight coordinator for Undisputed 3. It was Larnell that, that brought you into Undisputed 3, yeah. thankfully. Larnell's an incredible fight coordinator. Yeah, what yeah. I love about Larnell's stuff is it's it's got a lot of flash, you know, a lot of Hong Kong flavor. But yeah. like JJ Perry, there's a lot of violence within it <laughs> yeah very raw yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so like work on that a... short film he did um i remember seeing that short film he did and it, he was like turning into a beast or something did you work on uh, that? uh steel steel that yeah. was it steel Don't yeah touch that's me. right that's right yeah when i uh yeah when i got into la around 2006 he um he found me at lavc training i think pretty much and man he came to me right away he's like hey man i got something for you just uh you know give me your contacts whatever it'll be in the works he's like i know who you are you know i saw you i just did tommy i'm going and it just came out so i think people knew me from that a little bit but i'm still starting out you know humble beginnings in the industry you know and uh yeah um uh, it was still yeah, i guess he, he had his own independent project and um yeah he cast me on there it, it was fun man it was it was a very uh one of my favorite projects to do with him. It was very small, independent, low budget, but uh, talented guys on there. Yeah, man. Lionel's great. I've worked with him many mm -hmm. times. Here you are having a, this fight scene with Ratsa. Ratsa, yeah. Ratsa, and it's all like really long takes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, remember we didn't have too much time. I guess that half these. a day for this, wasn't it? Yeah, this is like half a day, I think. Yeah. Just morning. Yeah. Yeah. But you can just do it all in, in one shot, man. It's incredible. We can all do it in one shot. Like, you know, Ratza's like, you know, was, I was lucky to have him as well, you know, to be able to know where the camera is, open up, you know, that all those things are so important. You know, for yeah. But look at this, though. For you to get this um, kick in the right place, moving back like that, that is no. not easy. No. I mean, how many times no. did you try that? We didn't have many times. I think maybe three times at the most. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so difficult. Yeah. This was great. You, you like hit him said, hard man, now. Really Bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Bulgarian stunt guys are great, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're good. Tough guys. Talented. Yeah. And did you pick up the art of screen fighting quite quickly in terms of 
you know, how to throw punches, how to react, where to, to, to show to the camera and things like that? Did it come yeah, out? Yeah, um, I did. You know, like when I was studying, when I was in that zero gravity group a uh, long time ago, early 2000s, you know, we would study a lot of the movies. We would, uh, you know, be practicing angles with a camera, doing a lot of camera tests. So, you know, that was like a good three or four years of doing that. Here we go then. Yeah, here we go. Look at you all a bit sneaky. Yeah. Long shot look. Essence of the cup waiter right there. Yeah. <laughs> and you hit me. Yeah. And I basically fall over when you elbow me. It was like, Jesus. <laughs> I think I almost fell over. Oh. I fell into you. <laughs> Knocked me over, man. I was like, okay, I'll live with it. I kind of lost you for a second. I was like, oh, shoot. Let me go a little deeper just in case. Yeah. <laughs> And I think when I sweep you there, that's the thing that your transitions to go from that into a back somersault. I yeah, mean, I, I've never done that before. That's why I did a, I did a cartwheel. Yeah, I never did a, a cartwheel one way and backflip in the same spot or maybe oh. the other way. That was, uh, you know, I was just kind of going off your energy, brother. Well, this you is know, it because I think I pretty I touch your leg with the sweep as well because I'm I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this. I was like, this brother's fast, man. I gotta hurry. <laughs> yeah, I but, gotta get yeah. off the ramp. And there, when you kick me in the stomach, I basically wipe out again. Look, <laughs> but I did You're too. Just styling it out the whole time. <laughs> you know, what? I guess there's a lot of funny things in there. I, I, I touched my head on the ground when I was going backwards. I was doing like a macaco, and uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to, but I lost my balance too as I front kicked you right there. Yeah, but that, I thought that was you were doing exactly what you meant. Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of meant to, but I, yeah. I played it off. <laughs> yeah, you were doing what you wanted to do, Latif. It's me who's got no control over my body. <laughs> Look at the <this laughs> state of me. <laughs> no. Isaac's like, I love it. Moving on. Oh, yeah, good on Isaac. Yeah. You know what I love about Isaac, too, man? The fact that he's a martial artist and he you know, could actually direct me too. you know, on my action and some of my movements. I remember my rich hand and stuff. He's like, Latif, you know, turn it over, you know, rich, turn it, you know, clap your hand like this. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, here it is, bam, right there. <laughs> yeah, this is a lovely bit, this one, because we're getting close to each other. Oh, yeah. And I'm coming right at, oh, your, yeah. I'm coming yeah, right at your head with Ooh. the kick there because I know you're going to duck. Ooh, that was like a sword, your foot. Man, I remember that. Yeah. And there's yeah. the rich hand. It's applicable. <laughs> yeah. and this this was the move that when we were rehearsing, I landed. Yeah. I think we came up with it and said, "Oh, wouldn't that be cool if uh, if I throw you with this?" And you go. Yeah. When we practiced it, I landed on your foot. See that? I see how I sweep my foot around to the front. That's how I learned. You know that foot. I I left it back. So where you're landing right now, yeah. That's where I left it when we got hurt. When I got hurt. Yeah. So now I'm sweeping my leg around to the front so you don't land on it. Yeah, so I landed on it. Made. Yeah, I had to make that change. Yeah. Yeah. But that man, for you to go along with that too, like, you know, you know, a lot of people think it's, oh man, he did a cool move. It's like, no, we did a cool move. Because that's not easy to dance like that in the air, you know? Takes two to tango. Takes two to tango, for sure. Now this, I always tell people about this and when I talk about what, what it, it's essential to work with it with another partner because this was a difficult move for me as I said I didn't know if I could actually do it I didn't done it in the gym but to actually do it off this post it was a little bit slippy I wasn't sure if I could do it I remember the first take I landed yeah. flat on my back and everyone's like Are you sure this is gonna work <laughs> I said, no I can do this yeah I, I, I remember this being the second take but what yeah. I remembered more is that as soon as I landed and as soon as you knew that I'd done it and we were good to go further, bang, yeah. you were straight in there with that, that move. Yeah. That's, that's when yeah, you need but... someone like you that is, you know, just he understands the movement at such a level that he knows as soon as I'm good, you can just shoot him with that next, next move. Well, I'll give it back to you. I mean, to, for you to land in that mark to doing that move that you've never done before, get the height you need to rotate, land straight up and down so you don't land too far back or too far forward. 
so you can execute another kick. You know, we had limited time. Like I said, everyone doesn't realize it, but we had limited time. I thought that was amazing. So you helped. We, like you said, yeah, we, it was a two to tango. Mate, I was just trying to land it. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know where it was going to land. But the point yeah. is, when I did land, you you were there, and I I just throw that spin kick straight at your head, knowing that you'd get out yeah. of it. Yeah, I've seen that spin kick thrown at me a lot of times. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah, just did what I what I usually do. I think we we spent a day on this fight. Was it one day? Yeah, remember? it was one day. Yeah. One day, like not too much rehearsal. I'd catch you in between your acting takes you know, or your breaks. Yeah, there it is. That was a full twisting, uh, full twisting yeah. kit. I and wasn't even under, sure I could do it, to be honest. Shoot. But I yeah, we're right under you. Off. Yes, contact. Do you remember, uh, I think you did a, uh, how do you say that in English? Not a pot of fool. So you did like a, uh, maybe a 720. Ah, there it is. And you got me in the head and you yeah. came up to me the, uh, this this scene. You're like, hey, mate, it's so cool if I uh, actually make contact and kick you in the head. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, yeah, go for it. Let's get it. Well, if you look, you can see I've got a pad. We put a little pad on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. And I got, got padded. You got, you got uh, the dreads, man. Yeah. You got the exactly. dreads. So there's a bit of pad in there. If, yeah. you know, obviously, I'm not trying to kick you in the face and wanted to kick you like here. Yeah. You got me right on there, man. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. And yeah. of course, the obligatory spit the gum shield out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the nice. undisputed move where you know the guy's almost defeated. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Put a bit too much power powder on the floor here, though. Yeah, I think. Mean, <laughs> got carried away. Yeah, but man, that was a pleasure working with you. Uh, hard work, but really yeah. rewarding. Uh, one of the best fight scenes I've ever done. Uh, likewise, same with, same with me, brother. Yeah, I enjoyed it as well. And, uh, yeah. We it, had one, is day, one day compared to Tony Jones, one week. <laughs> one week, yeah, exactly. One day and, and like I said, little rehearsal time. We were both injured. And um, and that's just a testament to us, man. I, I really um, appreciate working with athletes you know, and martial artists like you. you know. It's Kevin Cantor-Owen. Um, approached me at that time. Oh man, I don't know when that was, 2011, maybe 12, I'm not sure when it was. And uh, he was a big fan of Tom Yum Goon. You know, he's a Thai, Thai guy, he's a big fan of Tony Ja. And uh, he approached me one day, I forgot where I was, I was trained somewhere, at 8711, I believe. And uh, he told me about this project he was doing with Mortal Kombat, he's how he's gonna make it more realistic, gritty, kind of like Batman Begins. He's gonna have Mike Jai White on there, blah, blah, blah. Well, Arnel Stovall was going to do the fights, so I was like, yeah, I'm in. Uh, everyone here did it for free. Did this for free. Oh, really? Camera. I think Kevin just spent seven, seven thousand dollars US on uh, this shoot. Everything was free. Good old Matt Mullins. Matt, Matt was awesome. And uh, yeah, he's a perfect Johnny Cage, yeah. We, we, we only had a couple hours to film this as well. This so, move yeah. here is a proper Larnell move. Oh, you, oh, yeah, you know it. Yeah, that's definitely learning now. Yeah. Yeah. Was it okay wearing the makeup? Um, yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Uh, the only things that bothered me was the, uh, mm, the forehead kind of bounced around a little bit. <laughs> it had these prosthetics yeah. on my forehead, and uh, but everything else was fine. You know? Or I had, also I had prosthetics on my arm that could jump around and... You know, kind of get loose when I was punching and stuff, but everything else was fine. Yeah. yeah, it's probably a lot easier than a Mandalorian suit. Yeah, yeah, that would definitely, yeah, <laughs> definitely. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> Got to talk about Tekka because you are this character come to life. So it's perfect that you should you should play him. I was almost in this movie. Oh man, who who were you going to be, Brian? Uh, Brian Fury, yeah, and then I, I couldn't do it, and Gary Daniels did it, and he's great, perfect for it anyway. Yeah, it was a close one. Oh man, that's cool to know. Yeah, yeah so this was around two thousand and ten, wasn't it? 
Yeah, this was filmed in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah, it was a uh, hmm. Yeah, hmm. Kind of funny. Yeah, I. Uh... Uh -huh. This the the actor here playing the other guy. What's his name? Oh, that's Darren Henson. Yeah, that's a good friend of mine, Darren Henson. Yeah, he's a dancer actually. He's a one of the like great dance choreographers here. He's like the uh, choreographed uh, dances for like 98 Degrees or something like Britney Spears, different things like that back in the day. Janet Jackson. So he can remember moves really easy. Yeah. Don't know about that front kick though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's not a martial artist. I know, sure. can tell. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good, it's all good. That could have given him a better costume. Yeah, yeah, they sure could have. My costume was okay, I guess that's pretty Your much. costume's cool, man. I mean, it is the Eddie Gorda costume. Yeah, I think I was probably the closest to the, you know, game character. Bro, so uh, actually Gary Daniels did a good job as well, playing Fury. Yeah, Gary Dan Gary's great. Yeah. Um, how many fights do you have in this film? Is it just this one? Just one. The first script I had, uh, I think I had like two or three fights in there. And then the budget went down. And then the uh, a next script came out. And then I had two fights in there. And then I get shot. <laughs> in prison or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? Then a third script comes out uh, before production. And then, yeah, it's just one fight and that's it. I don't come back. I mean, who makes the these decisions? Come on, this is the problem. Yeah. You, you're one of the coolest characters in the movie. Your martial arts is off the hook. Everyone loves that character from the game anyway. I used to play the game. I don't remember who the other guy is. I don't even remember his character from the game. I don't know. But I want to see more of Eddie Gordo. You know that that's the character that one of the the, the fan f favorites from the game, right? Why yeah. you know it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. Hollywood does that a lot. If you notice, you know. It's, uh, does that yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't even know how to <laughs> what to say about that. But. I mean, look, you never know. You sign up for these films. It could have been that it was as successful as Mortal Kombat. Right. Um, you know, but it, it just sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. As actors performers you never really know it's always a leap of faith right you know, you know i mean no one's going to read the scripts of mortal Kombat and go oh this is incredible i mean it is yeah. what it is but for whatever reason that film really worked and right. it did really well at the box office right sometimes it, it just doesn't go that way Yeah, man. Um, How's it shoot. working with Mike? Mike is, Mike, yeah, as you know, uh, actually, when I first saw you fight Mike, that's when I, was, I saw you. I was like, wow, these two guys, these are great athletes, man, great martial arts. But Mike's a different guy. He's he's different. Like, he, he's really legit. And, uh, yeah. you know, he looks, he hits about as hard as he looks. <laughs> and yeah. he's really, really fast, really precise. He's yeah. a scientist in his, in his martial arts. You know, he really studies his martial arts. He's an amazing guy, man. Yeah, he's legit, isn't he? He's, he's yeah. on another level, man. He's a f yeah. freak of nature. Yeah. Uh, his, I mean, even you know, we're performing, you know, we're not going too hard, but his, his blocks, when I had to strike him, like, with a punch, and he had to block, man, it's like hitting a wall. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's really, really strong, man. But really fun to work with. I tried to beef up as much as I can uh, to fight with him here, but you know, you can only do so much. Well, that's why I got as big as Boyka because I knew that he was playing the good guy. I was like, oh, yeah. I better put some muscle on them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't want to look too small, you know, kicking him and beating, you know, up a guy that's 230, 6'2, you know. Well, that's why Mike's like, I need to fight three of these guys. <laughs> yeah. I give one of them a sword. Yeah, I put a sword in his hand. <laughs> How long yeah. did you spend on this fight? I think maybe it was a, a day. I'm not sure, man. I have to ask Larnell. Maybe it was just, uh, two days, maybe, on this fight. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it a decent decent length fight. Yeah, I believe it was two days. We didn't have much. I was on this whole show as an actor, but yeah, this fight didn't. And um, here again, me and Mike were just rehearsing in like wherever we could. Whenever he was off work, 
Uh, we meet in the lobby in a hotel. Whenever I got off work, yeah, we meet somewhere in a you know lobby or right outside the hotel, and uh, work these moves. Yeah, that's what it takes. You got to put the work in, haven't you? Because yeah, you know, it's not a big budget movie. You don't have rehearsal time built into the schedule. You've got to find that time off your own back, haven't you? Right. The alternative is to just turn up and not be prepared, which of course <laughs> we don't want to do. No. Night to the ankle. You know, it's funny. That was um, uh, kind of a little history with Capoeira. That, like, that was a lot of uh, punishment for guys who did Capoeira. It was to cut the Achilles so they wouldn't fight or you know, run away. So <laughs> I kind of thought that move when yeah. he did that. I was like, yeah, that's a good way to get rid of me. <laughs> yeah. Jump. You do it to yourself, though, in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Punishing yourself. Um, you know, I was actually, I don't even know if Mike knows this, but I almost made Falcon Rising. I was talking to the producer about starring in that and then oh, wow. out for whatever reason. And then, I don't know, two years later, um, Mike was making it with, uh, in, in, with Ernie Barbara, she had worked with before. I was like, oh, <laughs> what happened? I what know what? You want me to do it? I, I can't remember that. Uh, actually, I think the whole movie was going to be a little different. I remember Isaac was talking to me about doing a Cup Waiter movie. Oh, no, that was something different. That, was that something different? Now, that, was, that was after I did um, Ninja. Right. But before Ninja, before Ninja, so it was after Undisputed 2, they wanted to do the movie Capoeira. I've still got the script somewhere, and it was going to be set in the favelas. And Isaac had gone to a favela in Sao Paulo and had met like the head guy there and was shown, shown around and they were fans of Boyka and all the rest of it. And they were yeah. quite accommodating, you know, but we, we weren't sure what we felt about it because, you know, we weren't sure yeah. how much we could trust <laughs> you know, all, that, all that stuff. Yeah. That yeah. We know about. Mm -hmm. uh, but for whatever reason, it, it didn't end up happening. We actually took part of the story and used it for, for Undisputed 4. Oh, okay. The whole aspect of him killing someone and going to find the, the wife. That was right. the whole Capoeira thing. We used it for Undisputed 4. But yeah, that oh. would have been cool, man. But yeah, Capoeira, I mean, I would have had to have gone and studied uh, some Capoeira pretty, pretty hardcore. But, you know, I've always had the gymnastics and I've got Taekwondo kicks and I felt like yeah. I had a bit of a Mark Dacascus on it. Yeah, 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 okay. man. You're like 70% there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're a good athlete, you know, to be honest. So, yeah, you'll adapt really well. You know. The only thing I would say, just the, the mindset, you know, is a, is a little tricky to, to get. You know, In what way? What's the well, mindset? Well, cup weight, it doesn't, it doesn't really have any, nothing to set, you know. Uh -huh. um, there's no good, there's no bad, there's no rule, you know, there's this and that. And there's there's treachery. There, it's, it, it's everything and it's opposite. It's beautiful, but it's violent. You know? It's a game, but it's a fight. You know? It's treachery and it's also, you know, you know it can be very uh, merciful, you know? It's just- That's the, that's yeah. cool. I, I wouldn't be turning oh. up for training. I'd be like, what what a day is it gonna be today? And we're gonna get the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> yeah, it could happen like that. <laughs> yeah, you just never know. How did you get involved with The Mandalorian? Because this is the best show on television right now. For me, it's just incredible. It's Star Wars done correctly. We have oh, to yeah. take our hats off to John Favreau and who's the other gentleman's name? Uh, Filoni. Dave Filoni. Filoni. Dave Filoni. Star Wars done right, man. And you are in the soup for a large portion of the stunts and fights, I should think. Yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, pretty much every time Mandalorian goes into action, pulls out a gun, says, you know, anything, fighting, running, standing sometimes. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in the suit. It's me and uh, another guy uh, who's a great actor, a good friend of mine, uh, Brendan Wayne. He's actually John Wayne's grandson. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, uh, he's, yeah. I've noticed that he's got the John Wayne swagger. 
Yeah, that's all I've done. Is that, is that a conscious decision to get him because he was related to John Wayne because oh. they wanted a John Wayne sort of archetype? Yeah, yeah a little bit of that. And I think uh, him and John Favreau are, you know, they work together. They're friends. Uh, they did Cowboys and Aliens together. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's a good, he's a great performer. So yeah, most of the suits or doesn't a suit. Uh, that's him. Uh, all the dialogue, you know, most of the dialogue. And then Pedro um, Pascal. Uh, also does uh, a little bit of the suit work and uh, he does the voice, the voiceover. So it's pretty much three of us. So what's it like wearing that suit and doing the action and the fights? Oh, it's uh, it's challenging, but uh, you know, it's kind of like what we were talking about with Undisputed. You just kind of have to go with what you have, you know, and make the best of it. But um, what's your vision the like? The vision is, is limited. It's, it's exactly what you see. It's a tinted <laughs> T right here. So this is pretty much what I see, side and then here. So you'll see, if you see me doing a lot of head movements in the, in the mass, it's because I really need to see who I'm fighting, where I'm going, and, and things like that. So, Is it strapped on under here nice and tight? Uh, when I have to do big gags, I have to do a big wire gag or, uh, you know, get a wire pull or uh, do a big fight scene where I'm flipping to my head, do a, any kind of big reaction, I'll have a chin strap. Other than that, when I'm fighting on my feet, no, I, I usually don't have one. And is the, this, the armor, I mean, I imagine it's not as heavy as that it looks, but how cumbersome is that? It, it, it's not so much heavy. It's a little heavier by the legs because I'm wearing so much armor down there. It's just kind of restricting. You know, so when I'm fighting all the guys, I'm also fighting uh, the suit, you know, as well. And, uh, you know, there's some parts that I have to, you know, make adjustments to so it doesn't cut into my, my neck or anything like that. But that's just, you know, part of doing any suit work. You know, it's always going to have something a little off and wrong. You just kind of got to customize it and we'll deal with it. Now, is, it ev is every episode filmed in that whatever they call it, where it's like a, an, an L, LCD screen or something. And yeah, the volume, it's amazing. Uh, you're pretty much in this virtual world. The, all the walls around you are LED screens and uh, that's connected to the camera. So I was like, please, like I'm bad with technology, so yeah. I can't. The camera moves <laughs> and the background moves as the camera moves, moves right? Exactly. And yeah. if you're standing and the camera starts moving, you, you kind of get a little dizzy because you can see the walls moving. Yeah, I was looking at the behind the scenes stuff thinking, oh, I'd probably be throwing up right about now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of stumbled a little bit when the wall started moving. But yeah, it's either from there or uh, in a back lot as well for the exterior shots. There's a fight scene on the top of a truck. Did you do that? Yeah, that was That's actually, yeah. yeah, we were actually about maybe 14 <laughs> or 12 to 14 feet high up on you know, the, it's amazing, man. Special effects, everyone, or you know, set deck, everyone, they built this truck. They actually built that thing. It's called the Juggernaut. And uh, uh, special effects put like these hydraulics under it. So it's actually moving when we're fighting. So that whole fight, we're actually bouncing up and down, trying to catch our own balance. And that would never have happened as good as it did uh, if they didn't have a good stunt, stuntman on that fight. Wow, yeah, this, uh, right before this scene, he, we kind of had an agreement together. We're like, hey, man, we're going to make this scene really, really, really epic. And uh, I was like, you know what? Go all out. If you're going to, you know, swing at me, you know, you're going to go hard. We didn't really, we only had like a few days of rehearsals. So, you know, remember the choreo was going to be a little difficult, but we did it, man. Uh, I couldn't see too much in that helmet. He's really using a dark saber. It's actually a practical prop that's lit up. And oh, really? It looks like that. Yeah. Cool. And so it was very hard for me to see, you know, of course, swinging when you only have this much vision. So, you know, all my martial arts skills, whatever, all my athleticism had to come out during this fight because um, I was just reacting to light, light, all light. That training, all that training back in the day, Latif, when you were doing it blindfolded, your master was making you do it. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Playing cop wetter, you always feel blindfolded. Someone's always on your blind side. So yeah, 
Yeah, a lot of training. Does he do a lot of this stuff himself, the actor? He did it all. He did it all. He's quite. He's quite good then, isn't he? For a, you know, yeah, senior. He's getting. Yeah, he went. Yeah, he went all out. He broke about five of those lightsabers though, which cost (laughs) cost a lot. (laughs) The props department was just like a little upset, but yeah, uh, he did a great job. I find a lot of the 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 older the veteran actors uh, work very very hard. You know, yeah. um, you know, physically, you know, it, they'll they'll put in all the work, you know, to make themselves look good, and that's what he did. You know, he, he did a good job. Yeah, I was going to ask if they did face replacement or something because he's he's really uh, a couple it. scenes they did face replacement. You know, a couple scenes like when I struck down on him, uh, I did this move where I kicked the. Uh, the spear and it comes down on top of his head and i think he had to block it real quick i didn't want him in there because yeah yeah i i'm not sure if he can block that so they had the stunt guy in there and i think they had to yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 because it, it comes quick yeah it's i love this show man how does it yeah. feel to be in something that's so wildly successful i don't know yet you know i, I don't <laughs> Never try to look at things like that. Um, I mean, man, to be honest, brother, I don't even watch TV anymore. I know I have my... <laughs> Busy. Yeah. I so I don't even hear what's going on out there, you know. I just kind of keep doing my thing. Oh, you and keep that... doing it. Latif, doing a fantastic job, mate. You're one, you're one of the best of the best when it comes oh, to you. martial arts on screen. I know you're a true martial artist in real life, but as this show is all about... The action on screen, you, you, you're one of the best to do it, man, when it comes to fights. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I, 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 you as well. I feel the same about you. Thank you. Fishing for compliments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to give it back. It's like, yeah, because I do. I admire you, man. Like, like uh, it was definitely one of my best fight scenes, you know. And that's the thing about fight scenes. A lot of times we do things together and we, you know, we go on this job and uh, we do this fight scene and then we go our separate ways, go back home, but it's, it's kind of like a little a bond, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, it's a bond that you have, you know? It's like, it's it's not something you can speak about. It's just an energy, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I had a, had a great energy, you know? And, yeah, uh, it's like you go yeah. through the fire together because it's really hard work, especially on these low budget movies where we haven't got a lot of time. And exactly. certainly on Undisputed 3, I mean, I don't know how you felt, but I know that me and Isaac were definitely like, because we were a little bit disappointed with Ninja that we'd done previously. And we're like, this has got to be great. Let's give it everything we've got. And I'm always kind of like that, but I knew that Boyka was so successful, the number two, that I really wanted to do something special. And yeah. I think the, that was the feeling from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on there too, man. That was great. That was really uh, one of my fun, one of my best jobs, I think, you know. Yeah. It's for- it will live forever on YouTube being watched yeah. over and over again. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Well, Latif, it's great to talk to you again, buddy. It's been way too long. We need yeah. to rematch in at some point. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ready, man. Do it. Ready to do it before you get too old. I know, yes. I don't know if we can compete with the one we did in Undisputed 3, but it'd be great to uh, to at least try. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, best of luck to you with all the stuff you're doing with, with Disney and The Mandalorian. As I said, it's just incredible, and I can't wait to see uh, the next season. And uh, best of luck with everything, mate. Cool. Thank you. Same to you uh, as well, Scott. Thank you, brother, for having me on the show. And uh, be safe out there. 